Ideas.com Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com podcast. Happy Remembrance Day and in this podcast we're going to be looking at a few public company announcements, looking at Village Farms International Incorporated trading on the TSX and NASDAQ as VFF, also looking at Hollister Biosciences Incorporated trading on the CSE as HOLL and the OTC as HSTRF, as well as Halo Labs Incorporated trading on the NEO as Halo and the OTC as AGEEF. And lastly, looking at New Leaf Ventures Incorporated, trading on the CSC as NLV, and the OTC as NLVVF. So first starting with Village Farms International, who announced that Village Farms wholly owned subsidiary Village Farms Clean Energy Incorporated has renewed and extended its existing contract with the City of Vancouver, under which the VFCE receives landfill gas captured by the City of Vancouver at the City's landfill site in Delta, B.C., now, the 20-year extension period with an option for an additional five-year extension period commences upon startup of the, D- of the Delta RNG project commercial operations. Now, the renewed and extended LFG contract enables Village Farms to transition the Village Farms clean energy to a more attractive long-term business model based on the conversion of landfill gas to high-demand renewable natural gas, which will also generate food-grade liquid CO2, significantly reducing Village Farms and Pure Sun Farms' reliance on natural gas to produce CO2 in their operations. The reduction in natural gas requirements is expected to eliminate 28,000 tons of CO2 emitted through the natural gas production, or the equivalent of taking more than 6,000 automobiles off the road annually. Now, the VFCE has entered into a partnership with Mass Energy LLC for the Delta RNG project, under which Mass Energy will design, build, finance, including all capital expenditures for construction, own and operate the Delta RNG facility. Throughout our history, Village Farms has been committed to environmental sustainability and clean agricultural technologies, said Michael DeGiglio, the CEO of Village Farms. The Delta RNG project will allow Village Farms to take this commitment to the next level to meet the evolving energy needs of the region and further contribute to the reduction of greenhouse gases in the Fraser Valley, with the city of Vancouver will benefit from the higher beneficial land gas utilization. Now, Village Farms and especially Pure Sun Farms Delta Greenhouses will benefit from a reduced reliance on fossil fuel source natural gas, as well as an improved earnings profile with lower ongoing capital expenditure requirements. It's a win-win for the region, our company, and our shareholders. Now, the City of Vancouver is pleased to continue our long-standing partnership with Village Farms for beneficial use of landfill gas for the Vancouver landfill. Their new venture to convert the landfill gas into renewable natural gas supports our ongoing efforts to address the climate, energy, and cut carbon pollution in Vancouver by 50% by 2030, said Albert Seamus, the Director of Zero Waste and Resource Recovery of the City of Vancouver. Um, So Village Farms International planning out about a 10-year project for reducing their reliance on natural gas into renewable natural gas. Um, I do think that that's a great move forward, obviously still reliant on natural gas, which isn't the cleanest burning energy in the world, but it is a huge step up from what they're doing currently. And uh, in general, that's probably the easier method of getting somewhat green energy going for the cannabis industry. Again, I've talked about this in the past a couple of times. Of how many of these companies have definitely invested in the solar sectors in the past, um, but you haven't seen any sort of mass adoption of that. This plan, at least for Village Farms and for, for Pure Sun Farms specifically, does seem to be a much more reasonable approach. Obviously, is uh, much more doable as well, maybe than being fully reliant on solar energy. I know that to create those large solar panel cells and uh, have that solar farm in place, it basically takes up more space than the actual. Uh, production um, greenhouses would be required for the actual cannabis production so in general I don't think solar is going to be the route to go but hopefully we'll start to see more of these sort of energy transitions from some of these cannabis companies where they're at least focused on how they can reduce their greenhouse footprint in some manner. Looking next at Hollister Biosciences who announced the launch of its direct-to-consumer cannabis delivery platform Dream Delivery. The company soft launched Dream Delivery to friend and families in the San Francisco Bay Area of Northern California to ensure a seamless customer experience in the early quarter four of 2020. And the company has expanded the platform with Dream now successfully delivering to legal cannabis consumers in the Bay Area. And the company hopes to launch Dream in Sacramento and the central coast of California by late quarter four of 2020 with the ultimate goal of delivering cannabis statewide. Now, Carl Sailing, the CEO of Hollister, shared 
This is a major first step in our quest to be the dominant direct consumer platform delivering cannabis to the entire state of California. Uh, so Hollister Biosciences launching their dream delivery platform a little bit late when it comes to launching online delivery platforms within California. They do have a good amount of competitors within that space. Um, and they also have maybe not direct competitors, but there are a few companies that are strictly delivery platforms that have partnered with other dispensaries um, that have done quite well within the California area. I do think it's smart for Hollister specifically, who has a very large a dispensary footprint within California and Arizona to go with their own delivery platform. But I do think that, again, this is a little bit late considering how many companies have already adopted to delivery platforms due to COVID um, over the last several months and how many have already had a good feedback from their customers and been well established within the states that they're in especially California, quite a competitive market. So I think it will be difficult somewhat for Hollister Biosciences um, to really separate themselves from the other platforms within that state. And for them to be completely the dominant direct-to-consumer platform in California is definitely a, a very aggressive milestone to try and reach. Looking next at Halo Labs, who has closed its previously announced acquisition of UK-based cannabis distributor, Canmart Limited, uh, not to be confused with the other Canmart in Canada. So as a result of the acquisition, Halo has acquired 100% of Canmart's issued and outstanding common shares, and in doing so, one of the few distribution platforms for cannabis-based products for medical use in the UK. So upon the closing of this acquisition, Halo has secured all of the licenses needed to import and wholesale cannabis-based medical products in the US, or sorry, in the UK. Uh, operations in a 30,000 square foot third party logistics warehouse in Southeast England, managed by Canmart. Uh, and the management team, with over 60 years of combined logistics and distribution experience in the pharmaceutical and health sectors, to help grow the business. So, in 2019 study, the International Energy Association reported that 255 tons of cannabis were sold in the UK at a cost of $2.6 billion uh, or $3.4 billion Canadian to 3 million customers. Now, in a 2019 publication by Dr. Daniel Couch at the Center of Medical Cannabis estimated that each year 1.4 million UK citizens self-medicate with cannabis legally, and it is thus understandable why experts predict as a result of loosening restrictions by 2024 that the legal UK medical cannabis market has the potential to reach 400,000 active patients and 1 billion in value. Now, additionally, the Extract Industry Advocacy Group recently reported the following positive developments in the UK cannabis industry that demonstrate the adoption rate of legal medical cannabis. Uh, the number of cannabis clinics has increased by 50% in 2020 with over 10 separate locations across the country. Cannabis clinics now have the ever-growing waiting list with the biggest chain of 1,000 patients. After a patient has been seen by a provider, prescription rates have grown to 96%, and the Care Quality Commission has authorized the use of telemedicine consultations to treat patients as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are so enthusiastic about the acquisition of Canmart and our growth plan for the United Kingdom, co-founder and chief executive officer of Halo Labs, Kieran Sindhu, said. Since the attainment of our cultivation site operated by Buffalo Biosciences and Wellnesses in Losetho, South Africa, we've been able to achieve the cultivation and distribution of high-quality cannabis derived from exclusive proprietary genetics under the license from the OG DNA Genetics. Now, the closing of the Canmart acquisition will allow us to further expand our reach of medical products to patients looking for individualized treatments in the United Kingdom and create new international avenues for distribution while raising Halo's gross margin. Uh, so for Halo... Obviously, again, uh, their earlier deal in South Africa has helped build out their distribution. I talked about that a while back, uh, sort of addressing how international hubs, for instance, looking at development platforms in, uh, in South Africa and other parts of Africa, in Israel, in Latin America, how for lots of companies, setting up those international hubs in those countries uh, is going to be a huge benefit for production costs in the global cannabis market, especially when they're looking at entering into the EU, as again, Canadian or North American producers just won't be able to hit the yields and cost percentages that uh, there are going to be competitive within the global industry, especially compared to, again, double year round grow conditions that can be achieved in South Africa or other parts of the world. Um, so again, focused on their distribution early and now focusing on entering into the UK market. Obviously, their acquisition of Canmart was a smart one. Um, and I do think that more and more you're going to see more companies moving into the UK as well as other EU markets. We've seen that pretty aggressively this year. 
Um, again, most of these companies have shored up the licenses and the import and export agreements that they need. The distribution channels have been established now. And as well, there is enough at least a few locations and dispensaries and medical service providers within the UK and within other Euro European markets that are now able to provide for these customers. And they do have an ever growing list of patients who are onboarding onto these medical cannabis programs. So I do think that within the next two to three years, you're going to see pretty massive growth within each EU marketplace, uh, especially the UK does seem to be progressing quite fast, at least for the medical cannabis programs. Whether they move into recreational in the future, uh, it's going to be probably a slower onboard. But at least for right now, there's a huge benefit for being in that medical program as it is uh, limited licenses. It isn't super established right now. And so those small amounts of dispensaries or medical programs that exist there are going to get a huge amount of patients. Um, and that seems to only be growing in one direction. Lastly, today, looking at New Leaf Ventures, who announced an agreement whereby its New Leaf USA venture operations, well, brand license operator New Leaf Enterprises, has conducted an agreement with Washington State-based Schilling Hard Cider for the creation of proprietary formulations, brand, and distribution strategies for a family of cannabis-infused beverage products. We've entered into a collaborative strategic partnership with Schilling Hard Cider, notes New Leaf Operations Chief Boris Gorondinsky. And we intend to launch our strategy with two exciting lines of casual beverages with around 2 to 4 milligrams of THC in conventional six-packs of 12-ounce cans or bottles. And our plan is to create a beverage that has the same drinkability as beer or hard cider, suitable for one to three bottles or cans consumed in evening to achieve a light to medium effect. And Schilling Hard Sizer's seasoned team will create the final formulations and branding, and then they will consult with us regarding production methods and provide licensing for the base formulations that we will infuse with high-quality THC. And the new leaf will put the product into cans, package, and distribute it. So founded in Seattle, Schilling Hard Cider has become a high-profile success story. Their innovative flavor-forward beverage formulations provide the basis of New Leaf's move into the casual cannabis beverage sector. And Schilling is ideally positioned as an article by the craft brewing business noted that a study of ready-to-drink products in 20, 2019 were the fastest-growing beverage alcohol category over the past three years. And this is fueled by the innovation and convenience of the hard seltzers in the U.S., Trend data suggests that innovation, affordability, refreshment, convenience, and youth appeal have contributed to sales growth. And Colin Schilling, the co-founder of CEO of Schilling Hard Cider, brings multi-generational entrepreneurial family history and values to the team at Schilling, which combines that outlook with modern cider making techniques to produce innovative, high quality, and complex hard ciders and custom formulations. Now, Michael Steer, the CEO of New Leaf Ventures, commented, when the team in Seattle brought this concept to us, it virtually sold itself. The revenue numbers for the beer and hard cider markets alone are astronomical, and by a reasonable measure, capturing even a slice of the available percentages and growing a solid brand built on quality, taste, and measurable effect is a winning concept. Our strategy has both near and long-term upsides with an in initial launch plan for early 2021, with retail sales commencing in Washington State recreational cannabis stores with an eye on expanding into other states. The company is also looking at CBD beverage options, which could be sold at thousands of retail outlets across the country. And the relationship with Schilling also brings access to their strong relationships with national beverage distributors. So as the product pathways begin to open, New Leaf will be well positioned for category placement in supermarkets and convenience stores. And this is an exciting opportunity for the company, our shareholders and consumers alike. And we look forward to working closely with the team at Schilling. Uh, so we've seen this a few times in the past. Lots of different cannabis companies have partnered with lots of different versions of beverage companies, whether they are alcoholic based or simply health and wellness beverages, or just simple beverage producers. Um, in general, again, the beverage market is still very underplayed, both in the U.S. and in Canada, Canada more so. In the U.S., you're starting to see more and more ventures like this with New Leaf Ventures working with a well-known uh, either cider or beer brand. Uh, within California, you've seen lots of brewers partner with cannabis companies to have their infused beverages on the market. Uh, so far, again, there does seem to be a difficulty in translation when it comes to trying to partner with an alcohol beverage producer and then bring a cannabis infused beverage to the market. Um, the overall reception hasn't been super consistent. And I do think that the difficulty there is a lot of people who are looking for cannabis based beverages are moving away from alcohol, which means that maybe having a brand partnership with an alcohol based company isn't the best strategy to go with. Um, I do think that there's obviously some benefits to that, and we are going to see at some point one of those companies succeed within a different market. But so far, there's been lots of speculation about that type of beverage, 
and so far very little actual success um, when it comes to combining those two types of companies. As well, the other thing to consider, and it's something that's starting to show up in the Canadian beverage market, but is the move away from simply THC infused beverages as opposed to having plant extracts of a more full spectrum variety being infused into the beverage. Um, again, there are starting to be companies who are realizing the benefits of utilizing natural terpenes, utilizing the other cannabinoids besides its THC and CBD in a very pure isolate form. Uh, but again, that'll be sort of dependent on where the beverage sector ends up in the future. I do think that that's a smarter play to go. And I do think working the companies that have worked more with actual health and wellness beverage companies versus alcohol beverage companies are going to have a more successful launch of their product. Um, but in general, there could be some brand crossover as people start to move away from alcohol into cannabis infused beverages. There might be some brand loyalty, for instance, uh, someone who's been enjoying Schilling Hard Cider taste profiles and wants to have just the non-alcoholic version of it with cannabis infused might might pick up those products, um, but I don't have a lot of expectations so far just based off what we've seen in the past with those types of operations. That's all for today's podcast and enjoy the rest of your day. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.